In this class, we will be exploring the world of immersive sound. You'll gain the essential skill sets to create a 3D world. You can explore an augmented reality that has spatial audio. This will also be a class going over the basics of augmented reality, animation timeline, and spatial audio in the Unity game engine. In this class, we'll be covering how to set up a project, how to set up an AR scene, add 3D assets, use Pro Builder, use materials, use VFX and timeline, and also a lot of the audio tools. And then at the end of it, we'll be able to create a application and an experience we could test in the editor and test out in the wild. My name is Steven Christian. I'm a medical student. I'm a STEM educator and I'm a visual artist. What I do is I tell immersive stories about black experiences in America. And I do that through comics and cartoons. And the purpose of my work is to not only educate, but entertain and empower those to overcome stereotypes and create opportunities for themselves. I go by the model create and conquer, which is creating opportunities that overcome stereotypes and bias. And that's what my work focuses on really decoding bias and combating stereotypes through the practice of art making and engaging with technology. And my work has been featured in the Wall Street Journal, it's been featured in HBO, it's been featured on Unity's platform, as well as social media sites and news stations. And with it, I really empower and educate and implore people to think beyond what is possible for them in hopes of inspiring others to do the same. And so if you want to learn how to create a 3D world, you can explore an augmented reality that has spatial audio. Go ahead and join me on this wonderful journey. Before we get started with the tutorial, I just want to let you know about some things. As you know, I make a lot of this stuff available for free so that you can learn and level up your skill set, you know, at a very low cost. But there are ways for you to support me. First and foremost, I'm on Skillshare. And so go to Skillshare.com slash stuck on an island and follow me and check out some of my courses that I have there. I have all the courses you see on my YouTube channel and many more. You can also support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash illtopia. Here you could have subscriptions that are monthly or yearly and you get access to my discord group and a lot of sneak peeks of things that are coming out soon from comics to new courses. You have a variety of tiers and stuff that you could support. So definitely check it out. You can go to shop.iltopia.com and it'll take you to this wonderful page that allows you to check out all my books, coloring books, augmented reality experiences, plushies, toys, and many more. This allows you to support my work and any of the stuff that I produce and put out there. All the proceeds go to funding all these projects that I release out for free on the internet, as well as paying for medical school. Because as you know, I'm a medical student as well. Last but not least, follow me on all the social nets. This is what I did to create an augmented reality world with a portal and spatial audio in Unity. First, I opened up a project and imported my assets. I installed the Bluforia SDK and set up an AR scene. I added my city and my characters to my AR scene. I made a box using Pro Builder for the sky. I added a door and a container using Pro Builder as well. I added shaders for the sky, the depth mask, and the door, and added those to the objects. I used the animation timeline to animate my characters. I used the control track on the timeline to control the VFX for the boombox. I added audio tracks and music to my timeline. I configured the spatial audio so that it worked in AR. I animated the portal reveal and then I added buttons using the canvas to control my experience. And voila! Okay, so in this lesson, what we'll be doing is we'll be opening up a new Unity project and importing assets. 
And so what we have here is we're at Unity. So if you haven't downloaded Unity yet, go to get started and then make sure you sign in, do what you need to do and click personal. And then it allows you to download this. And when you do that, it brings you to this thing called the Unity Hub. And this is the Unity Hub right here. Uh, there's other tutorial videos to uh, understand how Unity Hub works. Um, but when you do that, go ahead and create a new project. And with the new Unity Hub, we're going to go with the 3D Core project. And then we're going to go down to this drop down menu. You can choose whatever uh, editor version that you want. This one I'm going to use 2020.3.30 F1. Uh, there's other versions that you have here, but you can use that one. And then I'll just do AR with spatial audio as a project name, saving it here. We're just going to create the project. Okay, so now that we have Unity set up, the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to set up our project settings. So we're going to go to build settings and we're going to move this to Android because we're developing for augmented reality and so it's going to be for a mobile device if you have iOS you could do that too Android is just a little easier and so uh, switch platform to Android one of the reasons why we do this early on is because it makes it easy uh, it takes less time to convert the stuff over because it actually converts all the files that you have in your project over. And so now we're going to go to player settings and then in player settings, we're going to go to quality. We're going to drop that down to medium. That way it's a little render uh, becomes less processor heavy. And you'll notice that there's a green box here. So always go with the green box or higher. And then from there, we're going to go to our player settings. And under Android, we're going to get rid of this thing called Vulkan. Boom, get rid of that. We don't need it. That. And then we have multi threaded rendering. Get rid of that. And then we're going to go down to uh, Android 11. And then we're going to go to ILC or IL2CPP and then .NET 4, and we're going to check 6D4 for that one. And that is our settings for Android. If you want to do iOS, you just go to iOS, and again, multi-threaded rendering, turn that mess off. And then you have some like some build versions and uh, signing for like different profiles. We won't worry about that right now. But for the most part, everything is everything should be good. Um, if you want to do 40 or a net four, you can do that. ILCPP is uh, going to be de by default, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you want to require AR kit support, you can as well. But other than that, everything looks pretty good. And so go back to that. And you could actually dock this window over because we could actually add our name. And so we'll say, Miltopia um, Studios. If you want to add a default icon, you could do that as well. And so close that. And so now it's time to import our assets. So I have assets here called the spatial audio assets. And then I have some, uh, a pack of songs. And so what I can do is because this isn't, this course isn't really focused on creating the content. It's a, it's or creating the assets. It's focused on utilizing the assets. And so what we could do is we could just drag over the spatial audio to our assets folder. And it'll ask us, yes, do we want to have all this stuff? We'll just click import. And 
And so we got our assets now and it should fill up with a bunch of different folders. And so now what I'll do is I will go in because I have my, have my music, animation, uh, my prefabs, have all these different things in the assets folder. I'll go to music again then I'll take these the songs that I have and I'll just add them to it. So there's already one song in there, but I want to add another song called Step Back. So you just drag and drop just like that. And so now we have all our assets. We have everything that we need, the project settings, all the player settings, everything. And so uh, for you, before we move on to the next lesson, make sure to have your uh, project open, create a new 3D project, name it, choose the right Unity version, and then when you have that, change the project settings and the, and the player settings to Android or iOS if you have that, um, and remove Vulkan, or remove multi-threaded rendering, change it to Android 11, uh, add a, a company name if you want to, and then from there, uh, start to import your assets. You could use the asset pack that I provided, or you can use your own assets. Uh, but go ahead and import your assets in there, and you create as many folders or whatever that you need, and then we can move from there. Okay, so in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to go over how to install the Vuforia AR SDK and set up an AR scene so that we can get everything done in AR. And so I'm here at developer.vuforia.com and uh, in this portal, this is where you're going to download the uh, Vuforia SDK. And so you just go ahead and click download and then choose the download the latest one that they'll have. Um, and so again, you'll have to you have to sign in. It's free, and with their new recent stuff, they make all the licenses free now for the basic licenses. So that's it makes things so much better. And so what we'll do is I will go to my AR SDK, boom, and I will add the Vuforia right there. Just wait for it to download. And so we should have it downloaded here, as you can see. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, instead of dragging it over, another way for you to import your assets is go to assets, then import package, custom package. And then when you do that, we have spatial audio. So we could go in, we could choose add before a package right here. We'll just click open. We'll just click import. It's like update. And so when Vuforia is done, you'll go to window and you can see Vuforia configuration. So we'll just go ahead and click that. And so we have our Vuforia configuration right here. You select that and go to the inspector. You'll notice that we have a bunch of different settings. First thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and add a license. So you click add license and it'll take us to the Vuforia portal. This is our license manager. And so we could say get basic license. And again, the licenses are free, so just go ahead and choose one. And we'll just say AR Spatial Audio. And then we'll click that and we'll click Confirm. And so now we select the Spatial Audio. Click to copy it, go back to Unity, and we just paste it in that area. And so now everything is ready. We could change the, the mode to quality or default or uh, speed uh, it's up to you and don't worry about database or any of this other stuff 
And then if you want to test with the webcam, you just use the webcam you want. And then another one is a track device pose. Because we're using ground plane versus image targeting, if we use image targeting, we would turn off ground, uh, track device pose, but we're not using Im image targeting. And so we want to make sure this is on, just like that. And so now let's move on to setting up an AR scene. So we're going to go to scenes. We're going to go to create new scene. And we're going to say uh, spatial audio. AR. So have that and we'll click double click to create it. So now I have my spatial audio AR scene. First thing we're going to do is we are going to go to right click and go to Vuforia engine and add an AR camera. And then we're going to delete the main camera. Next thing we're going to do is right click Vuforia engine. And then we're going to go to ground plane. We're going to go to plane finder. And then lastly, we're going to add a ground plane again, go to ground plane stage. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to go into our inspector and we're going to say in the plane finder or anchor stage, hit that ground plane stage right there. And then we're going to click duplicate stage and we're going to turn that off. And in the mode, we're going to have it be uh, automatic. And then in it, we don't want mid air. We want to make sure it's plain. So I'll keep that. And then uh, in the future, we're going to use this on content placed 3D object or game object. And everything should be good. And so this is going to be our uh, default AR scene right here. One thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and just create some containers for all our stuff. So we'll say uh, create empty and this will be just AR content container. And then within that empty, we'll right click and we'll go to 3D cube. We'll just place that in there and we'll say uh, a six by three cube reference like that. So what we're doing is we want to have a cube and this is, this is front, right? So this is to the right. There we go. And this is back. And so we're here at the front. And so what we want is we want to have the, the cube be a scaled in the X by two. So you want to have it be uh, two, no scaled in the Y by two. So that it's six feet because this is a, a three foot by three foot by three foot cube. We'll just say scale in the Y by two. And then we're just going to lift this up. And we're going to lift it up to Y is, is one like that. And so now what we'll see is we'll see a six foot cube. And the reason we're doing that is because when we remove the cube, you'll see that there's a ground plane stage. And the ground plane stage is 100 centimeters. So that's about a meter. And so we want this cube to be our reference of, of our person, essentially, you know, a six foot person. So we have this, this is the front. This is our front right here. And so I could actually add a little cylinder in it. So cylinder. Just rotate the cylinder around like this, lift it up, this gives us a, a little indicator of like where we're pointing. 
So this is our front right here. We'll just call this pointer, pointer cylinder. And so this is what we got here. So this is us front pointing just like that. So now we have a, we have our, our AR scene with a, a reference cube right there. And we have the container, everything that we need. So now, if you haven't already, go ahead and download Vuforia. Download, uh, get again, get all your assets and everything that you need. Import the Vuforia SDK. Uh, in Vuforia, make sure to get all of your license keys and everything there. And then uh, create a new scene. Uh, replace the AR, replace the main camera with the AR camera. Add a plane finder, ground plane stage. And then go ahead and add a container uh, empty container and place a reference cube in there. So after that, you should make sure to save it and then go ahead and let's move on to the next lesson. Okay, so in this lesson, we're gonna add our city and our characters to our AR scene. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and go to our prefabs, uh, and you'll find that in assets and prefabs, and we'll, we'll find city environment. And when you click that city environment, it has a pretty much a huge city that we could, that we could work with. And so we could actually create a container before we do that, and just create a container. So empty container, and we'll just call that city, like that. And so we'll add that to the AR container, uh, AR content container, and we'll just zero it out. We wanna make sure it's at zero, 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 like we see here, and everything is at one, that's good. And then we're going to place our city environment inside that container, like that. And so as you can see, we have our 3D character our reference in here already, like that. And so what we can do is we could align the city environment so that it is 90 degrees. So we're just gonna rotate it. And we wanna make sure that the, the pointer is looking out. So this if this is the front right here, we want to make sure that the pointer character is sort of in the center like that and then sort of on the edge. So this is why we have our pointer character uh, as a reference like this. So we want it to just be, you know, just outside of it. So we have our 3D, we have our 3D character right here. Uh, we have our 3D world, and it should be to scale. You know, if we if we move the character next to one of the cars, you know, it should see that yes, this this should be to scale. Uh, we can make it a little bigger. Bigger, if we want it. That means that we need to lift it up a little bit more like that, and then moving it back. So now, make sure that it's on the ground.
So we got that. It's on the ground. Everything looks good. And so now that we have our 3D character in there, our 3D model uh, scene, we'll just move this back a little bit. Uh, so now that we have our 3D model scene in here, we want to add our 3D character. And so there's a thing called the dancing character right here, as you can see. Uh, and so I'll just add my dancing character in as well. And so we have our, our city reference. Let's go ahead and create a character reference. Actually, let's just throw our character in our AR content container like that. It should be in a character container already. Yes, he is. And so we'll take our character right here, dancing character. And we'll just place them in the scene. I'll just place them just in the center here. And then we'll rotate them. So with our character, we could go in and select to make sure everything is good. And so, uh, and you'll find the character in our 3D models character design. And it should have a rig with the humanoid and it's all configured and everything should look good. Just like that. And we have that. And so now we have our character in our scene. We have our 3D 3D world right here. And it's placed in our AR scene right now. And everything is under our AR content container. And so what we'll do is I'll actually place the dancing character in the city like that. And we could go ahead and save that. And so now we've just expanded our a 3D content container with uh, our AR content container with um, with our reference still there. And the reference was really helpful for us to know where to orient our city and then also how to scale our city. And so if you haven't done so already, make sure to uh, add the city and the character into your AR scene. Make sure to get an empty game object first so that you could use that as a container to house everything. And so now when I can remove it, you remove it and it all removes. Uh, and then make sure to scale it, orient everything in the right way using our 3D reference cube, and then uh, place everything into AR, and uh, then we should be able to move on to the next lesson. So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to use Pro Builder to build out a sky. And so as you can see here, we have a city with clouds in it. Everything looks nice. The only problem is that we place this in AR. You're going to see our sky, the real world sky on top of this sky. So let's actually create a sky so that this is uh, going to be a, uh, a blue sky. In order to do that, we go to package manager. And then we go to uh, Unity Registry, and then we're going to go down to this thing called Pro Builder. We're going to need that. So just install it. So now that we have Pro Builder, we will be able to find it by going to Tools and Pro Builder, and we'll just open up that Pro Builder window. And so the thing that we want to do is we want to go to New Shape. So we'll click New Shape. And in the drop down menu, we want to have a plane. So we have our plane right here, as you can see. And we want this to be facing down like that. Facing down for the axes. 
So we could move this over to our, I could change the orientation that we have for this. I'm gonna move this over here and make it smaller because this is way too big. So we'll make this try 30, no, let's try 300, that's still too much. Say 100, 150 by 150, 150 by 150. And we'll just move that over here. May need it to be a little bit, a little bit bigger lengthwise. There you go. And then a little smaller lengthwise. What we could do is we could actually rotate this. So I could rotate this so it's a little bit easier to manage because we want it to be a reference to our anchor. Like that. Perfect. So now that we have our plane, let me go ahead and just raise it up like that. Everything looks good. So now we'll hit build. And so then you could close Pro Builder and we have our plane here. So now I could select the plane. I could select open Pro Builder. And then with that plane selected, I could have all of the edges. I'm gonna select edges right here have all those edges and we'll just select them all. There. And then I'll click extrude edges. And now when I drag these down, I could extrude the edges down. And I could drag them all the way down. Like that. So we have, we have that. And so what we have now is we have a container that's surrounding our, our city. So now that we have the container surrounding our city, what we want to do is we want to add a material, a material that's going to make everything a little bit easier. So we'll just create a, uh, in our assets folder, We'll just create a new folder, call it materials. And then the materials folder we'll create and we'll create a new material. We'll call this sky. And so in it, we want to go to unlit shaders and we want to choose color. And then we want to choose like a blue, like a light blue, sky blue. So now that we have that, we'll just place this over, uh, place this on our box right here. And when we have that, we have our sky. And you'll notice that there's no shadows in the sky. And the reason being is because we have it as an unlit shader. If we had it as a standard shader, you'll see that there's shadows and we don't want that. And so we'll go through unlit color. Boom. We have unlit color for our sky. And so we'll just rename this to sky. And then we'll just place this in our city. And we'll save. And so go ahead and get a download pro builder, place a plane in there, select all the edges and then drag them down so that it creates a, a box and then create a new material, choose an unlit shader and then choose whatever sky color you want and then place that material on the uh, sky box plane that you created. And then when you're done with that, we can move on to the next lesson.
So in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to create a door uh, using ProBuilder uh, to act as sort of a portal for our uh, for everything. And so the first thing that I'll do is I will actually create or move over to where I need to be with this. Uh, by just honing in on on my character right here, my reference, because this is where the door is going to be. So in this, we'll go ahead and click Pro Builder, Pro Builder window. We're just going to select select this plus sign. We're going to choose door. Uh, then we're going to make sure to have the object selected. We're just going to orient our door in a way that we want it. You could change the the view so that everything looks good. We want it to be just a little bit below our character. And you notice this is really high. So we'll just change the total width to, we could have four for the width. I think I like that, but the total height, that's way too high. What we want is it to be, you know, no more than 10 feet. So, uh, so we'll just go with what, like 3.5, cause this is in meters. So we want this to be, but like a 3.5 foot door. So we got that. And so now we can hit build and then we can close that. And this is going to be our door. So we have our door right here. And so now that we have our door, we, uh, and we have it oriented in the spot that we want it, uh, we could actually move it forward a little bit more. Uh, just cause like that. There we go. And so the next thing we'll do is we'll actually go ahead and uh, create a new shape. This time it's going to be a cube and this cube is going to be a one by one cube. And we're just going to place it down at zero, zero like that. And so with the one by one cube, we could go ahead and uh, hit build. This is going to be the cube container that we're going to create our, uh, our effect of masking with. And so with that, what we're going to do is we're just going to move it just back a little bit behind our other, other cube. In our door, and then we're going to select the uh, anchors here, and we're just going to make them wider. That's like so we're just going to spread it out as as far and high as possible, so we could zoom out, get to the point where we're just hitting the diagonal, and boom. Then hit and diagonal, boom. We have that. Then we can move to the side. And then we'll just pull it back. Like that. So now we have this container. So when we hide it, you're hiding the whole building. And as you can see, the container is containing everything that we in it. And so now that we have that, we're going to go through and you'll notice we still have our door right here. Still have the door and the door is slightly in front. Makes things a little easier. So with our door, what we'll do is we'll use that as a reference to cut a hole in this plane. So with our cube, we're going to select the face selection and we're going to select this face here the front face and we're going to go and subdivide faces so hit subdivide faces and it makes multiple faces as you can see here so then we're going to choose another one we're going to subdivide faces again and so now we have a face here that we can use and so we're going to actually just get our our scale tool we're just going to scale it down like that. And then we're going to move it to the side. 
And then again, we're going to scale it down. And we're going to move it to the side, move it down like that. And so we'll go to our door and hit the uh, sort of the close uh, symbol. And then we'll go here and we're just going to try to match the door opening with the with where it needs to be. We're just matching it door open to where it needs to be like that. And again, we could change the the different view that we have to work with. So change that view to there. And then once we get it to a point, uh, we'll just have some overlap like this, right? We could choose one of the edges and then we could just modify that. So we could just lift it up, lift it up higher. So now we have our cube here like that. That's doing all the stuff that we want. The last thing that we need is to actually just delete the space. So what we'll do is we'll delete the space by going and saying uh, delete faces like that. And now that we have that, there we go. Have a, they have an edge right there. So now that we have that completed, uh, go ahead and create a different, uh, create a different cube. After you create that different cube, you want to expand it, and make sure it's oriented in the right way, expand it and cover the whole city. And then subdivide the front face two times or three times so that you have a small square. And then you want to make that the opening by placing it in the area where the door opening is and then deleting that face. So when you're done with that, we can move on to the next lesson where we add some materials to the door and to our cube to mask it out. So in this section, what we're going to do is we're going to create two materials and these materials are going to help us with our uh, unlit stuff. So first and foremost, we forgot to uh, name this. So we'll say uh, mass cube and then we have door. So we'll just place those in our, in our C like that. And so in our materials, we'll create a new material and we'll call this door material. And in the door material, we'll keep this as a normal shader, a standard shader. And we'll go ahead and select the door. We'll sort of zoom in. You can press F to zoom in with our door material. We'll go to opaque and we'll just make this a, like a golden door. So we'll have it be yellow. And a, a good trick is we could actually drag and drop this material on our door like that. And then if we change different things about it, it'll change, uh, it'll change how it looks. So we want to have a metal material like that. So really metallic like that. And we could have it be a little immersive or emissive. So you give it a little bit of a, a pearly look to it.
Yep, so I just have a nice emissive material like that, and it's shiny. So this is sort of our, our golden our golden door. I like it. And then the next thing that we could do is we're going to create a new material. And this is going to be our uh, depth mask. And the depth mask is going to hide anything that's contained within uh, a 3D object. And so if you place this on the 3D object, it'll hide everything that's within it. And so we'll go to uh, depth mask here. And you'll notice there's nothing here, which is perfect. So we'll place this over our door or over our mask cube. And voila, what do you know? It's gone. It's missing. And so now when we hide the mask cube, you see everything. When you place, when you turn it back on, it's gone. And that is our depth mask. And so now that we've finished our a cube and everything, everything is done. Now we have our depth mask. Everything is where we want it to be. And so uh, if you haven't done already, make another material, call it door material, place it on the door and make whatever color you want. And then we have a depth mask. So we're going to create another material, create the depth mask with the depth mask shader. And then, uh, and then we place that on our 3D objects. And then again, make sure everything is under our city box right here. And then you click save. Now move on to the next thing where we add some animation now. So in this tutorial, in this lesson, what we're going to do is start to add some animation with our timeline. So we're going to Window. Uh, we want to make sure that in Package Manager we have uh, our Unity timeline up to date right here. So we have that. And so once we do that, we're going to go to Window. Uh, then we want to go to Sequencing and then Timeline. And we'll just drag our timeline down at the bottom here. Cool to have it at the bottom. Next thing we need is to have an animation timeline asset. And so we'll go to our animations folder and then we'll go and we'll create a new empty, call this animation timeline. And so we'll place that in our city as well. And then we're going to select timeline here. We're going to hit create. We're going to say animation timeline playable. Yes, you want that. Now you notice that it creates a animation timeline here. That's perfect. And so now we want to go through the settings. We'll change the frame rate to 24. We'll change the, we'll keep the frames or seconds there. Uh, and then we'll lock this so that whenever we select different objects, it doesn't go away. Because every time we don't do that, it tries to make a new timeline on other objects. So we'll just lock this here. We'll hide our, our mask cube because we don't need that. We want to make sure to have our characters and everything. And then I'll just zone in on one of the characters. And everything should be, everything looks good. And so uh, one thing that we forgot to do is forgot to add our uh, boom box. And so what I'll do is I'll add, I'll add my character boom box in here. So I'll add it into the city like that. And then I'll just place this boom box here. And this boom box has a variety of different things in it. Just like that. So place my boom box. This goes in our city. Uh, and 
So now what we can do is actually go through and we'll take the dancing character. So we'll have our character design character and I'll just place him here as an activation as an animation track like that. And you want to make sure to choose the, the object with the uh, avatar in it, not the dancing character without it, but the character with the avatar, because that's our animated controller. And then I want to have the boom box as well. So I will add animation track for the boom box. And so the next thing is I want to just add some dances. And so I have some animation here. Uh, and this animation is for the boom box bounce. And so I'll just drag and drop that onto the boom box. And so when you see it, like that, you drop it down and, and it looks like that. So we could actually play this. And voila, it works like that. And so the next thing I could do is go through and add other animation files that I want. So if you go in and search, we'll have some animation called Hit Them Folks. And what this is, is it's a, it's a mixture of different animated files that I, that I have of dancing. Right? And so what I can do is I can go through and I can start setting up a dance sequence for this character using that animation. And so I'll just go ahead, hit F to get it to a point where I can get all the different ones. And then I'll just start dragging and dropping some of the animation files over. And so you'll notice that the character is facing a different way. And that's the reason we have our empty container on here is we could actually rotate them like that if we needed to. And so if we had it on the character, uh, if we had the dancing character as the animation file, then one, it wouldn't really do all the, we wouldn't have this uh, level of control that we wanted. And so that's why we just rotate it with the dancing character. And so go through and say, I want up to here. And then you could actually hit uh, control S, no control We hit S to split. And you can move on and say, okay, I want different areas of this, right? So I wanted to do this Dougie part. So like that. S again. Then I'll say I want to uh, do another dance move. I want to. I want to hit the whoop. Oh, but I also do like this. Uh, so I'll keep that. Keep the splits that he that he did and then for this one right here i'll drag that over and i want him to
There we go. Yep, so we have that. Let's all have him do the woo, this. So we're essentially just kit bashing and, and getting all of our different things on here. As for that one, we'll just get rid of this. And so now we have our different assets right here. And so you want to be able to just create some nice transitions. So we'll just overlap these just slightly. Just like that. So now we could actually play it. These are pretty smooth transitions right here. Just by overlapping it. Yep, just like that. And so if we want this animation to loop, we could actually go here to a wrap mode and have that be loop, just like that. And so the next thing that we can do is we could actually just duplicate the boom box a variety of different times. And we could just place the boom box sporadically around this so that the boom box is moving as well. We'll just space it out a little bit. Then you could select them again, duplicate it, move it out, select again, duplicate them all, then just move them out just a little bit more. And you just repeat till you get what you want. Then you just trim the edges. You don't need the other ones. Get rid of those and voila. Like that. And so that is our animation. And so again, go ahead, add your characters to the timeline, create a timeline, download Unity timeline if you haven't already. And then afterwards, go ahead and add the different animated assets to it. Use the hit defaults if you don't have any animations. Go ahead and find the boombox animation, add that to it. Don't forget to add your boombox as well. And I'm using the VFX boombox because we'll be able to use some VFX and add that to the timeline in the next lesson. So go ahead and get that done and we'll move on to the next lesson.
Okay, so on this one, what we're gonna do is we're gonna create some control tracks for our VFX. So this is different than dragging and dropping to our controls. Uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually just create a, a control track ourselves. So we don't want a signal, we want control track, and we will create multiple ones. We'll create about three, because there's three different VFX. So we have our musical note, uh, two musical notes, and then we have an explosion. So we'll say these are musical note one, musical note two, and then musical explosion. Like that. And so with our musical note one, we just drag down our musical note right here. And when we go over it, it plays like that, right? So we could actually just have it keep playing. And then the second one, musical note two, will have that, and that will start playing. So we'll just drag that over. So it's just gonna be a continuous track, right? And so musical explosion, this one is gonna be a little different. So what I'll do is I'll actually move this up to the top, musical explosion, because it's going to fit with the with the boom animation that we have. So I'll just add this musical explosion. And as you can see, that's it right there. So I'll have that just fit with our other one. And so when the musical explosion goes off, it, there's a light and everything that bounces with it. So everything, there's lights and stuff that uh, accentuate it. And so what I'll do is I'll just duplicate it right there. I'll place it there. Perfect. So now we're just going to follow that the whole time, right? So I'll duplicate both of these, duplicate, then I'm going to have them there. Then we're going to duplicate these. Boom. Then duplicate them again, line them up, up. Then this should be the last one. Boom, and we just have these lined up. Oh, looks like we need a, a couple more. We'll just duplicate again. And we'll just line these up as best as we can.
like that. And so now, like that. We have our VFX. And so go ahead, create three control tracks, rename them just to keep organized. And then we're gonna drag our mu musical notes into one of them and then drag it all the way to the edge. Musical notes two to the other one, drag it to the edge and then take our uh, musical notes explosion. We're going to uh, replicate the pattern that we did for the VFX boom box. And when you're done with that, then we'll move on to the next lesson, which is where we add our audio track. So on this thing, what we're going to do is we're going to add an audio track and add some music to it. And so we're going to one, create audio track. We'll do that. And then we will actually use an audio source. That is the boom box right here. So what we'll do is we'll have this audio box be, or the boom box, be that audio source right there. So create the audio source for the boom box. Boom, we do that by dragging and dropping. And then we go to our sounds for our music. And we can just listen to the music that we want. that song I like that song too and so we'll just choose one of them I'll choose the uh, I'll choose the bottom one like that and I don't want it to have as much of a lead in. I'll say I want to go straight into the track. So I could just trim it down. just trim it down to where the edge is like that and that is our audio track right so we have our audio source we have everything that we need the boom box is our audio source and we have the audio track there so go ahead and uh, drag and drop the boom box over down here to create an audio track and then play find some music and place the audio track in there and that is how we add some audio and so and as we move on, uh, make sure to get all the audio and stuff set up because the next thing we're going to do is configure our spatial audio now.
Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to be focusing on spatial audio. And so in the previous lesson, we created a boom box and we added an audio source to it. So now the audio source is going to be our boom box. If you look at our AR camera, we have an audio listener. So that's where you're going to be listening to the audio. For the spatial audio, what we want to do is we want to convert this from a spatial blend 2D to 3D. So go all the way to 1. And when you do that, it actually makes it spatial audio. So the closer the, the camera is to the boom box, the louder it's going to get. And so in order to control that, in order to control that, and we could do that here for this one as well with the audio source, we go ahead and create one for the spatial blend. Right? So for audio track, it will do the same thing. So audio track, turn that to 3D spatial blend. And then the audio source, turn that to 3D Spatial Blend. And if you want to teeter to the left or the right speaker, you could do that as well. We're going to keep it on both speakers in the center. And then with our, uh, with our audio, we'll say max distance. So this is the distance that we want it to stop, right? So you won't be able to hear it any further than, uh, than 100 or 500. So what I could do is I could actually modify this, right? So this is all going to be in meters. So the minimum distance. So this is where it's going to be the loudest, essentially. Um, it's going to be, we'll have that be at, have that be at 0.25. And this is all in meters. And then the max distance, we want that to be, uh, probably like 10 meters. And then you could just modify this to where be a little, little wider. So you could delete different ones as well. little easier to navigate like that. So now the closer it gets, the easier it is. You just follow this until you get to the right one. And so as we get to two meters, it gets really loud and then it really spikes up. So we just make it at maximum, boom. essentially 30 feet louder, like that. You can play around with it, but we want it to be to where if you're further than 10 feet, or further than 10 meters, it uh, it's not gonna be the same. Let's say 15 feet. Fifteen feet is going to be the lowest. And it gets higher and higher and higher, like that. And so there's our spatial audio. Very much the closer that we get to it, and we could actually do, we could actually test that out. So I'll just create a cube, and we'll have this cube be um, in the Z, I'll have this be um, five. Right? So as you get closer, it gets louder, right? We could actually test out this distance right here. So we'll say this is 12. So technically, we could actually move this around and say, oh, max distance is 15. Yeah, so max distance is 15. So we could say max distance 15. This is what we get. Uh, 
going to be the loudest here. It's going to be not recognizable out here. We get kind of weird. So perfect. That's what we wanted. So if you want to test the spatial audio to see if it's actually working, normally you would have to build to a device if you want to do it in AR, but with Vuforia it makes things a little easier. And so since we already have our camera here with the audio listener, and we have everything already set up, we can actually select our camera, and then we can hit play. And when you hit play and you move it away, you hear that you notice that it, you can't hear it, right? But if we get closer, you could start to hear it. And it gets louder. And we could actually use this to uh, modify the levels even more. So if you lower it, to be a little better now when we choose it again choose our camera All right you can barely hear it and as you get closer to it it gets much louder like that so, not very loud. Loudest. And if you have headphones on, if you move to one side, it'll focus on one ear. If you move to the other side, it'll focus on another ear because this is spatial audio. So if you're in the center, the levels are about the same. And then when we go to one side, it's harder. The other side, it's a little harder. So yeah, that is a, that is a difference. So as you get closer, moving the, uh, going ahead and moving forward makes it louder. If you move to the left, it shifts the sound to one side. If you move to the right, it shifts the sound to the other side. And think about it as with those, those same notches, you are able to test it by just moving the AR camera around with the audio source. And so that is a way to actually go ahead and um, have our uh, spatial audio in there. And so again, you know, if you want to test it out, go ahead and utilize the, uh, the AR camera as a way to test it out. And then using all of the uh, different notches for spatial audio, uh, spatial blend, move that to 3D. Uh, in your timeline, move the spatial blend to 3D as well. And then go ahead and use the uh, 3D sound settings to, uh, to make it even better. And so with that, we'll move on to uh, animating a portal rebuild. Okay, so in this lesson, we're going to animate a portal review. And we're gonna do that while the while everything is placed. So what that means is that we're going to be animating essentially our, our 3D city in like that. And we're going to have uh, some some animation trigger. So the first thing I want to do is we want to go to change our aspect ratio to portrait and I'll just move that over here. Makes things a little easier. So this mimics what our, our device display is gonna look like. Well, after that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna uncheck and I'm going to 
create a new timeline and we'll call this reveal timeline. And then I'm going to go to my animations and I'm going to click create like that. And so with this, I'm going to have this go into our AR content container and I'm just going to zero it out. So I want it to be on the front, just like that. And again, I'll make sure that the frame rate is 24. And then I'm gonna see how the city be placed in here. And I'm just gonna have it be an animation track. And then I'm going to essentially animate it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have it be, I'm gonna have it start recording and say 36 seconds is what I want. And I'll say the scale scale of the city will be uh, uh, at a keyframe right there. So scale position, city, everything on a keyframe there. And so here, I'm actually going to just change the scale. I'm going to make it uh, zero. Like that. Get zero. So this is what we have. So in this, I'm going to say that with this, I want it to be, I don't want it to be playing on a wake. And yeah, I want it to hold. Or I'll just do none, just like that. And so in my plane finder, when I say on, content placed, I want it to have it essentially create this reveal like that. Actually, when I finish it out, I want it to hold, I want it to hold on the time. So like that. When I hit place, it keeps it just like that. So we have two different timelines now. We have the reveal timeline, and then we have the animation timeline. It's like that. And so with the animation timeline, or the reveal timeline, uh, we want to control that with a uh, content placed. And so in order to get to the content placed, what we're gonna do is just make sure that we have our reveal for a timeline first. And so go ahead, create a new empty object, place the city game object in there, and then we're going to make it an animation timeline, and we're actually just gonna add two keyframes. Go out to around 36, and we're going to uh, set that to one, and just add a keyframe there, and then we're gonna to go to zero, and we're gonna make a zero keyframe for the scale for both of those, just like that. And once you're done with that, then we'll move on to the next lesson where we're creating some buttons for the reveal and the play. So on this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to create some buttons and have those reveal when we place our content. So we'll create a new UI. We're going to create a new canvas, and this will be our button canvas. And then we're going to create some buttons. 
So just create a button and you'll notice that the button appears right here. So we'll just make it just bigger. So we'll go through, find where a button is. Just make it bigger, boom, like that. I wanna say having it be 350 by 150 is pretty solid to me. So 350 by 150, perfect. And then what we want to do is we just want to anchor it at the bottom. So we'll anchor, so Alt Shift, anchor down at the bottom in the middle, and then we will uh, just shift it over. So position to the X, we'll move that about negative 250. Perfect. And then I'll change the text. I'll make the text much bigger and we'll call that reveal. And we'll, what I'll do is I'll just change the button to reveal button. Perfect. And then we'll duplicate it. We'll call this a play button like that. And we'll make this positive 250. Just like that. And so now with it, their play button and a reveal button. The reveal button, I want to use the reveal timeline. So I'll hit reveal, go to playable director, we'll hit play. And then for that, again, we want to make sure that it's not play on awake and that it's on game time and it's on hold. And then for the play button, we'll go to our animation timeline. We'll say not play on awake, but we want it on loop. And we will go to our play button and we'll move the animation timeline there. Playable director, we'll hit play. We could take it a next step further by first, let me just changing the text of play. And then after we do that, we could have a pause button. So we could duplicate the pause, the play button, say pause button. We'll have the text be pause. Like that. We could actually change the color. So we'll just change this to red. And we'll change the play button to green. And we'll say that this pause button is actually going to pause. And so we could actually create another plus right here. And we'll say when the pause button is on, when it's pressed, we want the game object to uh, be set active and not to active. And then we want to have the play button be set to active and have that be active and vice versa. We'll create two of these pause button, set that to active and play button. set that to not active like that. So if we hide the pause button, right? The play button is there. And when we hit the pause, hit the play button, it'll play the animation and it'll hide the play button so that the pause button is there, right? And vice versa. So now we have a controller that controls the uh, reveal and it controls the uh, animation. And so with this, we could actually, when we press the reveal, it is actually going to um, remove our other buttons. So boom, we could have that. We could have bull set to active. And then we could have our play button and we'll set to active for that one. So inactive for this one, 
active for that one. And we could actually turn this off. So the way it will work is this button will show up first. And then when you press it, it'll have the play button. And then when you press that one, it'll have the pause button. And those two will work in sequence. So technically, we could try to start this now and see how it works. So reveal, saw that it played, and now we have the play button, and now we have the pause button. Play, pause, play, pause. Just like that. So technically we could just have all of these lined up the same way. So it could just have these just be zero, like that, and then we could just make it a little wider and like it lifted up a little higher just like that just go to 100 so now each one of these buttons uh sort of fits the same way and so now that we have our button canvas set up we just want to have it connected to our plane finder so we mentioned on content placed we'll just have the button canvas place that there we'll have that to set active just like that so now we could actually just turn off our button and when it's placed we'll actually have the plane finder place it and it'll turn it on just like that so now we'll just go ahead and save it and so before we go out to test it go ahead and create a canvas create some buttons uh, connect the buttons to the um, the animation timelines that we have and then connect each button to itself so that when you press one it turns another one off and then take that button canvas and we're going to place it under on content placed in the plane finder and we're going to set that to active when you place it and so now that all that is done we have our project together it has reveal, it has everything, and so it's now it's time to test it. So go ahead and finish this lesson, and then we will go on to building. So in this lesson, we're going to build to a device. And so in order to do that, again, we change our company name, product name, change it to whatever you want. Make sure that all of our settings are good with Android 11 and all that, because we're using an Android device to build to test. Then we're going to go to build settings and we're going to go to add open scene. So add our open scene. Then we're going to go to build and we have our spatial audio right here. I want to say spatial audio zero one. That's just a naming convention. I'm gonna create an APK. Okay, so now that you do that, we're going to actually add our phone in we'll have our APK I'm just going to add it to my SD card I'm just going to copy it out here spatial audio right there and then we're going to go out and test it so here we go
Okay, so we did our first test and it worked, but not as smoothly as we wanted it to. So what we're going to do is we're going to optimize the experience and we're going to test it again. And so back in Unity, we're going to go through and you notice that we have our uh, animation timeline here. So we're going to go to the animated timeline and we're going to go back to where it says our timeline here, right? I'm going to lock it and we want our city to be at one. And so we'll actually make an animation and we're just going to have the scale of it, scale of our city be one. So we're going to go to the inspector, scale, add key, position, add key, rotation, add key, just like that. One keyframe, that's all we want, just to make sure it's at one. And so the second thing we're, we're going to do is we're going to make sure that the scale when we start off, the scale of our stuff is going to be zero. So we want the zero and the one. So have zero on the Y. And so when we have our reveal, we're going to have a reveal. It's going to open up like that, right? Open up with our reveal. So once it's open, then we're going to go over to the animation. Then we're going to have the animation like that, right? Well, if you take all this stuff away, it's going to be zero. So this should fix it. Well, we have our animation and it's one. And our regular city is going to be zero to start off with. So we'll save that. Again, animation one, but city, regular city zero. Animation one, our reveal is one. And so that's where it's gonna be at. And then lastly, we wanna get rid of our cube because the cube was in the middle and we didn't want that. So we're just going to remove our cube by turning it off. And so we'll save all that stuff, boom. And so the way it should work is we'll have the reveal and then we'll have our animation and that'll play like that. And so now that we have those things set up, everything should work smoothly now, or at least smoother than we did before. So we're going to go to our build settings again, spatial audio build, and we're going to have this B02 now. And so now that that's done, we're going to connect it to our phone and place it on our device. So SD card, scroll down, spatial audio two, which is this one. Perfect. So now, Time to install it and move on.
Now that we have completed this course on creating a 3D world that you can explore in augmented reality with spatial audio in Unity, you should have a better understanding of how the Unity game engine works and can be used to create experiences that have animation, augmented reality, and spatial audio. There's a lot of stuff that you can do with this. And now that you have the skills, you can explore those things. If you want to learn more ways to explore your creativity with art and technology, have a look at all the other classes that I have available. Again, my name is Steven Christian. I am a immersive artist, a Unity certified 3D artist and instructor, and also a medical student. And I hope that you enjoyed this class and I hope that you continue to create and conquer.